Welcome back once more. This is Inside Politics here on KTN News. Now, the Court of Appeal has declared the contract for the Standard Gauge Railway as illegal. This was following a court uh, case filed by uh, activist Okia Omtata, which was backed by the Law Society of Kenya. Let's listen into the LSK president, Nelson Harvey. The, the people responsible in procuring this project in contravention of the law be investigated and prosecuted. Because as we speak, we have a decision that is incapable of, uh, of, of, of enforcement. Now, there, there, there are outstanding issues that arise out of the decision of uh, Justice uh, Isaac Lenaola. First and foremost, he castigated the Law Society of Kenya and Okia Mtata for taking a spirited uh, campaign against the SGR project. He classified uh, the, the, the action as a personal vendetta intended to scuttle government project. If that so, this is a project where colossal sums of money are being invested. Loans have been taken. These loans will be paid by Kenyans. It was therefore outrightly wrong and immoral, let me not even say illegal, on the part of the, of the judge then to have come to this conclusion. But, but, but over and above that, it's high time that the individuals who were involved in the procurement of the SGR contract be brought to book. Remember, when we were before the High Court, we insisted that if the court finds for a fact and as a matter of law that this contract was irregularly procured, then all state officers who are behind it must be held to account who was the minister in charge of transport? Who was the attorney general? Who was the minister in charge of finance? These are the people at the center of this transaction. And if monies have been lost, as it's quite evident from uh, the introductory uh, statement of the decision of the Court of Appeal, then somebody has to be held accountable. Otherwise, this war on corruption that we're being told about every day may really not be a genuine war. Let us start with where it matters most, where the people of Kenya have lost colossal sums of money, where the laws on procurement have been contravened. That is the starting point. As president of the Law Society of Kenya, Nelson Harvey, speaking on that ruling by the Court of Appeal, let me begin with you, Bwana Wakili. Um, we've spoken about that contract for the Standard Gauge Railway a lot here on this show. Um, Many people calling for it to be made public. What does this all mean? I think, Ben, the, the less talked about the SGR, the better, because the more you talk about it, the more you realize that it was a dubious business. It was a white elephant of sorts. Because up to date, nobody knows or nobody can place a hand where the contract is. In a certain December, the president told a, a journalist that he will avail the contract. To date, nobody knows where the contract is. Though that is how slippery and dicey the ball is. But coming back to the court of appeal judgment or the ruling, is that the next question anybody who have read the judgment asks is, why don't we go ahead and uh, pierce the veil of incorporation of China Bridge and road company. Maybe we are talking about a company in China, but the owners of the company are in this country. Because looking at how things were done, they were done in a manner that it was not meant to benefit the public, the Kenyan public, but a certain cabal or clique of the people. And when you go further to even whatever has been done, against all conventional business practice, we have had people forced to transport their goods through SGR, which in itself is not constitutional because it, this is a free market. It should be dictated by the economies of, of demand and supply. If I, if I want my goods to be transported by rail, it is up to me as a businessman. If this man Smoko wants to transport his bananas from Nyakemincha to Mombasa through Ambokinya or any other means, it is up to him. Why do we want to force economics to suit SGR? The other thing is this. It's been around four years implementing the SGR. It's been a good flagship project. But do the maths add up? We need to ask ourselves, is this, is this what Kenya's bargained for? 
for how long will we get the value for our money? Because you have seen DCI going around places and saying this contract is being investigated because Kenyans did not find value for their money. Right. And yes, I support the LSK president that now that the Court of Appeal has pronounced itself in this matter, and we looking at the judgment and, for, and its enforceability is in question, what we need to move forward now is to ask ourselves, why don't we investigate and arraign in court the people who led to this? And the other thing, maybe we can go ahead and ask. Who are these people, though? The, uh, the, the office general? of the attorney general must be at the center right. of it because the other question is this. Did this contract find its way in parliament? What was the what was the ruling or what was the finding of the committee in parliament charged with the task of transport? The other thing is this. What was the cabinet approval? How was it approved at the cabinet level? The other thing, was there advertisement or an, uh, advertising of this contract to what we call to the international people or even to the Chinese subcontractors? Was there due process? Yes. Those right. are the questions. And if Kenyans cannot answer those questions, we can go ahead and ask the Chinese people that we will not pay you, we will not pay this thing because it was procured through fraud. Okay. And the people of this country did not stand to benefit. The other thing is this, we need to ask ourselves, how comes we have a rail built by Kenyan money, paid by taxpayers, but ending in a private farm? All right. Fair points there, and it is uh, good to say at this juncture that um, that, uh, r that rule that all uh, cargo from the port of Mombasa to to Naivasha, to going to Uganda and Rwanda and the likes has to be transported by SGR has been quashed by the High Court in the last few days. Um, this must, um, is this a bad loan? And if it is, if it's a, more than 500 billion shillings, uh, where does this leave us? It leaves us in a very uncomfortable position. But when you go back to the basics and you've indicated as much, on these are very sure a few days to the election, a number of us as a panelists said that our SGR is a, a white elephant and it was uh, taken in a manner that doesn't serve the interests of uh, Kenyan. I remember very well, I recall very well, that a number of uh, panelists, in fact, who indicated that uh, this is a, a poster project, this is a global best practice, that universities are sending people to come and study the project because it's going to give, uh, it's going to cause a revolution in the transport uh, sector in Kenya. But obviously, the, the High Court and the Court of Appeal now have got uh, two different opinions on that, that this is a pure white elephant. Now, for us to be able to make uh, progress, we must ask ourselves um, three important questions. Number one, who are the key political players and public servants behind the execution of this uh, project, which has been found illegal and unconstitutional? Now, those politicians and public servants who perpetuated uh, this project, are, going to, are they going to suffer any criminal responsibility for either errors of omission or commission? Or are we just going to give them a, a pat on the back for behaving in a manner that has violated our constitution and a manner that are, is uh, illegal? And then moving forward, is the National Treasury still going to make allocations to pay for an illegality? A project which has been found to be illegal, a project which has been found to be unconstitutional. Now, if we do not answer those uh, three questions, then Kenya is going to be in a very bad space. If there's nobody who is going to take criminal responsibility for horrible decision making in this process, then uh, there will be no reason as to why any public servant will respect the procurement procedures or respect the constitution because they will say, the guys who made their fortune from uh, SGR, the guys who, who made a, who become millionaires and billionaires from SGR are now very happy people. They've invested uh, globally. They're having the most expensive uh, alcoholic beverages and uh, pepper sticks all over the world at the expense of morale so we can embrace this as a best practice. Now, if President Kenyatta and his brother Elo Dinga are serious about uh, killing corruption, then let them request or order for a forensic audit of this SGR so that we can find out who, is, who has criminal responsibility. Because we cannot just sit back and um, wish away what the Court of Appeal has said. And right. then number two, we must remind President Kenyatta to respect his uh, promise. Because he promised uh, a local TV journalist that he is going to make the contract public. Maybe by making the contract public, then we'll actually understand who are the key players. 
and we must lift the veil of incorporation. Lawyer Kipchumba said we pierce the veil of incorporation, but I'd like us to lift the veil of incorporation. We may be surprised to learn that in fact all these companies that we are being told that are, are Chinese are in fact not owned by the Chinese or they are not in, in, owned by the Chinese government. They could be owned by Onyango, they could be owned by Maina, they could be owned by, you know, Wakesho. People who decided to go and incorporate companies in Kenya and use them as special purpose vehicles. And we've got a similar incident in uh, Mozambique where then the, the minister responsible for finance decided to engage in a similar activity. He did not consult uh, the, na the National Assembly. Like for SGR, the National Assembly just starts by the beach. They had no idea what was happening. A, a decision was taken. And this finance minister found himself being arrested in uh, South Africa. So we must use this SGR in as much as a lot of resources has gone uh, down the drain, but we must use it as a, a best practice of how not to engage in international business, right. how not to. But if we let the architects of this criminal enterprise go home with their looted uh, resources, then we'll have embraced you know, criminal procedures. We would have embraced corruption in our books. All right. Mark, this is an audacious uh, uh, a development if this happened. It's a massive project. And if it was illegal from the word go, does Kenya have a right to freeze payment of this loan uh, to, 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 to try and investigate what really happened? In my view, yes, because uh, constitutionally speaking, and just to emphasize the rule of law and order, we cannot continue to pay something that the, our courts have uh, deemed illegal. But that also means that we have to look at the terms of the contract, and that's where the difficulty is. You may find that the law of jurisdiction in that contract is not even Kenya. It could be in China or even in the UK, and that speaks to how we negotiate these contracts to begin with. And we must begin to seriously look at the people who, who get into contracts on behalf of our country. This is not the first time our contracts and our tendering processes are in trouble. Look at Kimwarer and Arol. Kimwarer and Arol has nine different directions and stories as to how uh, those tenders were actually given to which company received the tender finally and even which company was executing. So yes, we do have a problem as a country in terms of how we negotiate contracts, how those contracts are implemented and whether we follow our procurement procedures or not. But at this point, I think it is important for me to separate the baby from the bathwater. The bathwater is in the contract. The bathwater is in how much money the thing ended up uh, spending instead of what it was budgeted for. All of those things are indeed evil and I expect and I hope the president is listening to us and, and, and his brother Raila Odinga that we expect that some of the CSs and the people who are involved in this particular procurement find themselves in jail. But let's not throw out the baby. The baby is this, that we do not build infrastructure to make a profit. Because if it was profitable, then the road to my house is not making any money. I can tell you, my kids are not an, an industry for, for it to make sense economically to build a road to my house. We build infrastructure to make the people of Kenya comfortable. And for me, the reason why I still support that we need to do uh, SGR-like projects, but minus the corruption, minus the bad tendering, is because when I look at the pictures of how many Kenyans are safely transported between Nairobi and Mombasa, the Kenyans who will take SGR to avoid the traffic of Nairobi and connect to the capital city, all of these changes must be supported, minus the corruption, minus the theft. And I hope that since this has been the, uh, the case uh, from the Court of Appeal, I hope by Tuesday, Monday, some people are at the DCI headquarters in handcuffs. All right. Ben, Mark has made a very important point. The public infrastructure are not supposed to make profits. However, they must make economic sense. Again, it's made a very important point that uh, public infrastructure is supposed to make the beneficiaries comfortable. I'm surprised that he doesn't know that Kenyan traders, especially the ones in Mombasa, have made uncomfortable by SGR because they have been forced to use SGR at gunpoint, not because it makes economic sense. So then how, how do we say that this project is actually giving us the intended outcomes okay. if the principal beneficiaries are uncomfortable running with the project? Good points. Chero, let me come to you. You're very passionate about this issue. Um, um, 
we do not know the contents of that contract, but um, uh, is it the Chinese to blame for this? Is it Kenyans to blame for this, that we have spent or are going to spend five, over 500 billion shillings? And uh, there was no public participation. There was no approval from parliaments, basic uh, procurement procedures. Then this is a scandal of spectacular proportions. You know, if you were to uh, dig into the anatomy of corruption, one of the things that we will find out is that if there's one way that corruption has been facilitated in this country, it is through the consistent violation of Public Procurement and Asset Disposal Act, uh, consistent um, uh, uh, distortion and ignoring of finance management. So when I look at the SGR scandal, I think about the fact that we have a government that does not respect the rule of law from the very top to minor functionaries in ministries. And this is exactly how the SGR scandal unfolded. And even when you look at the ruling that came from the Court of Appeal uh, saying that the contract was not regular, for me, ultimately, it doesn't matter who is to blame. We know that China Roads and uh, Bridge Corporation was already blacklisted by the World Bank for irregularities in the Philippines. How did they end up on the table? Well, I understand that there were three other bidders who should have been um, able to, to competitively uh, bid for this, but they were axed out and they tried to say it's because uh, the financing was already in place and uh, therefore uh, the financiers dictated who was to implement the project. And this was absolutely not the case. And I'm glad that the Court of Appeal found in favor um, of, of Okia Omtata in that uh, particular regard. But ultimately, this scandal straddles three, actually two administrations and three or four elections, whichever way you're looking at it. We're looking at the administration of Kibaki that had uh, Raila as prime minister. This is when all the plots were hatched and cooked up. And then the financing kicked in during the Jubilee regime, which has now been going on for two cycles. Ultimately, if we were to look at the issue of personal liability, and I'm a huge proponent, a huge proponent of personal liability. We would be in a situation where we have people who know there is no statute of limitations. But let me take us further when it comes to issues of public uh, procurement, um, uh, uh, Ben. We are looking at ministries of health. We are looking at ministry of, of energy. Every place you look, there is something suspicious when it comes to issues of procurement. And we have the ability to correct this, but we are not able to. We are not able to because there is a continuous disrespect for the rule of law. So the hundreds of billions of shillings that we owe, I would like us not to pay it, but I would like us to dig deeper as Kenyans and get to the bottom of what happened. And with the SGR, the white elephant that it is, that has no benefit, you can say there's one family that benefits, SGR ends in Naivasha, and in Naivasha, 5,000 acres of land, who owns that land where the SGR terminates, if not the Kenyatta family? You look at Ketraco was talking about 25 billion shillings for electrification. You look at wave compensation and the scandals that involve even senior most politicians who are jumping from coalition and alliance to another. So Ben, this is a very big problem. All right, well said. We will continue to keep an eye on this. Uh, the soap. Maybe to add something on what Chero and Bichachi are discussing. It is now these SGR projects bring to forth the importance of public participation as a principle, or as a constitutional principle in this country. Because w had these projects had sufficient public participation, the issues being raised by the Mombasa traders would have been dealt at that level. And that also goes to question, where is the feasibility study of the SGR? We might not have anything to, to ask the SGR, the project itself, but we need to ask in the feasibility study, what was the proposal of how they will deal, they will mitigate some of these things? Where is the environmental impact assessment that was done on this? And right. finally, maybe also we need to ask ourselves, after what we need to learn from the SGR project that whereas the state can have a non-disclosure agreement with private entities. Those non-disclosure agreements must not, must not make absolute the constitutional right that the Kenyan constitution has given to Kenyans that any Kenyan can access public information. Okay.
We will continue to dissect these issues for you. What this means indeed that ruling by the Court of Appeal that that contract is illegal. Let's take an quick commercial break here on Inside Politics. We're back shortly with, more, with one more round here as we will be expecting to hear from you to have the final say on what we're discussing this Sunday. Talk to us. Our studio lines will be scrolling at the bottom end of your screen. We're back shortly. Stay with us. <laughs>